When my daughter Elizabeth was small, one of the favorite places we went together was to the Oklahoma City Zoo. She had a few favorite places she wanted to visit every time we went to the zoo. And one of those places was the large cat exhibit. In the Oklahoma City Zoo, the exhibits are intended to mimic uh, an animal's natural habitat as much as possible. And so in order to see the tigers, we would have to walk through this large stand of bamboo, which created a barrier between us and the animal, almost as if the tiger wasn't supposed to know that we were there. Most of the time, the tigers were asleep because they're more active at night and they would not even notice us. But one day, the tiger we saw was pacing back and forth, back and forth and back and forth. So much so that we noticed it had actually worn a path right in front of the fence there in its enclosure. What we noticed that day was as it paced, it would follow us with its eyes. And we could feel that tiger's anxiety. That animal knew it was not free and that we had come to watch it struggle. Our trips to the zoo were normally full of delight and, and learning and sort of an appreciation for all of God's diversity. But that day, it just felt different. That trip to the zoo, it was a hard trip because we saw how terrible it is to be lost and not know how to find your way to freedom. We got to experience that with that tiger that day. I've actually seen parallels to that tiger's experience in my own life and in the lives of others that I listen to and I hear stories of pain and, and loss and futility that absolutely make us pace on the inside. We know we're not free. And when others show up, we are certain they have come just to gawk at our pain. Our culture tries to convince us that living behind a fence is just like being free and that we should be grateful for the safety and the security that the fence provides. But we know, inside we know that's, that's not how we're made. And so we pace. Last week, we finished our class session by reading Paul's instruction to the Galatian Christians. It was chapter five. Maybe you remember verse 22, Paul talks about the fruit of the Spirit, and he names it as love and joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, and self-control. And then he ends that little section with a beautiful exhortation. He says, against these sorts of things, there is no law. And he's reminding us that when we're fully surrendered to the work of the Spirit in our lives, we are truly free. We don't need a cage. We don't have to pace. Even those who come to watch us, they're welcome in our space, not as gawkers, but as fellow journeyers on the path. I wonder if you could yield yourself to that vision. Could you soften in your own demands of yourself? and your expectations of others. Could you soften enough that you could be free, free to live this life in the spirit? This week, we're gonna to have to sit with questions like these as we prepare for our time together, because this is what I've come to discover, friends. Our cages are almost all of our own making. When we come to class, I'm gonna ask you to engage step number four. So on the first lesson, you remember, we went through each of those steps on the steps of faith. Step number four is that we would receive forgiveness so that we can live out the grace that has been extended to us. Friends, I'm going to have to ask you to be honest about the barriers to forgiveness in your life. And most of the time, the barriers that we feel first are the barriers that we have toward forgiving someone else who has hurt us. But I hope to be able to make the case for you in our class that mostly the barrier, and this is the one we pay no attention to, is that we have a hard time receiving forgiveness. And the case I want to be able to make to you tonight, friends, is you cannot extend to someone else what you have not first received. So I want to ask you to think about a question like this. What is it in your life? 
that keeps you pacing in front of that fence? What is it that keeps you locked up? Sometimes that's how I describe the spiritual life when it's run into a, a wall and it can't move forward without surrender. It feels like being locked up. What keeps you locked up and unable to run free? I hope you're gonna spend some time reflecting on that as you get ready for our class, maybe even journal about it. Because finally, what I wanna be able to ask you is this, can you sense the need that you have in your life to be set free, to live a life in the spirit that looks like love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, and self-control? Can you feel the draw of grace calling you forward? Can you sense how much, how much you need that in your life? I know that leaves us vulnerable when we feel like we're in a place of, of needing something. But friends, I wanna encourage you to embrace your vulnerability because this is what I know. The character and nature of God, and we talked about this last week, is to be faithful is to provide for us. And so when we come to God with our thirst, God will provide. God will meet our needs. God will offer us mercy. So I'm gonna invite us to be honest about how much we really need that in our lives and then trust that God can provide it.